Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to talk about Gotrek and Felix, some of the most important characters and well-known characters in the Warhammer franchise. It was only a matter of time when Total War Warhammer became a thing that Gotrek and Felix were going to be implemented and a while back they were, as a FLC kind of situation where you needed White Dwarf and yeah, they were a pretty fun aspect. Originally one was a lord and one was a hero on a temporary basis but that has now changed. You see Gotrek and Felix have received a rework in their own right, something to make them much more useful and for that you're gonna have to start off a brand new campaign and just go by the motions. As a quick note Gotrek and Felix are available to all the factions that originally could recruit them so pretty much the order based factions and they'll work in a very similar way to the standard legendary heroes that we currently have. So play through the motions, level up your characters, and eventually you're going to be met with a pop-up, which is going to be quite interesting because, yeah, it looks like a lot more effort has gone into this implementation than other legendary heroes in a sense, even though they are recruited in the most basic way. So I leveled up Carl Franz a little bit, he got to rank uh, 15, I think this is going to be the standard for everyone, and you will get a pop-up one new dilemma, which is the adventures of Gotrek and Felix, with a little bit of lore. Geheimstag, or the Floating Holiday, as it's known among the citizens of the Empire, marks the rarest of occasions, when both the twin moons of Morsleib and Mansleib are risen and bright in the night. Fitting the veil that separates the mortal realm from the other planes of existence. It is no coincidence that on one such Gahamishnat Eve, the Hallowed Dwarf Slayer Gotrek and his mannish companion and chronicler Felix Jaeger detected and defeated a Suneshi cult, only to find themselves transported to the realm of chaos to face more horrors at the whim of the insidious Prince of Pleasure. His game master, a keeper of secrets, must be found and killed for Suneshi's foul game to finally end. So yeah, this is a brand new quest battle, it's actually fully voiced and so on. I will have the intro playing, the problem is that it does seem that there is a little bit of a bug. Keep in mind I am in a development build, so yeah, it does kind of skip a word every now and then. Uh, it's not a lot, but it is kind of noticeable. And the battle itself is really, really different. I'm actually quite happy with the implementation, so let's find out what the changes are. As the day of mystery thins the veil between worlds, Slanesh enacts his vengeance, dragging enemies from across the mortal world into his dark realm. Among the captured, the rogues Gotrek and Felix fight, battling to escape the Prince of Pleasure's domain. Only destroying his arcane portals would weaken the Dark Prince's grip. Yet those protecting them will demand the toll in blood. No matter the price, Gotrek and Felix cannot fall, for their survival will deal Slanesh a deadly blow and prove vital in the adventures to come. So yeah, they even had it voiced too to make it a little bit more official. Now, one thing I'm going to state is this army that you can see on screen right now, that's not going to cut it. This is actually a fairly difficult fight, mostly because you have to deal with a bunch of different enemies. Because what you have to do is destroy gateways, and at the same time you have to protect Gotrek and Felix, who can die. So you're going to need a much better force. You're not going to be able to get this early game unless you've been managing to cheese some recruitment. But yeah, let's talk about the battle properly. I've got a much better army now. You see a bunch of great swords, you know, some regiments of renown and some knights, which are going to be very useful. Unfortunately, with this campaign, I got the short end of the stick where I got a spellcaster that I don't generally like. But yeah, you're going to have to start off with your deployment. Try and prepare your forces as well as you can because you need to protect Gotrek and Felix. They can die. Gotrek is very squishy at the beginning, especially since there's a bunch of Sinesh stuff, which, yeah, is good for taking out single entities. The Keeper of Secrets is very good at taking out characters too. And you don't only have to deal with that. You know, there's enemies that are constantly spawning. Sinesh Demons, Sinesh Warriors, and even some Witch Elves. So yeah, there's some Dark Elves there. 
it's a shame that we haven't gotten the proper change to Morafi just yet, but maybe that's a little bit of a hint in the future that we might see something. As you can see at this point, there are three markers. Those are some Alluruses, which you have to take out. Yep, they are what's causing the spawn to happen. If you can get some damage to them, there is a way to actually make them leave that position and come straight down. Obviously, if you're playing as the Empire, you're going to be fine because, you know, Deathclaw is very good at killing off some characters. If you're playing as Cafe, you should be fine too, but you might struggle a little bit with Bretonia here. Uh, it very much depends on your playstyle, obviously. But yeah, you're going to be dealing with constant spawns, constant enemies. You're going to have to keep these guys protected. There is chances for both of them to die. I did test this out where I had weaker armies. Uh, Felix can break, obviously. Gotrek is just constantly fighting. And yeah, he can be killed depending on what he's fighting against. I had some units of Chaos Warriors of Sinesh basically just delete him. It's pretty interesting. It's a very cool system. And I think that this is one of the better styles of quest battles. Again, very gamey, but then what do you expect? It's something which is supposed to be themed. Scripted battles like this are very, very cool. It can become a bit of a clutch, uh, depending on what you have. Again, a harder quest battle, not so bad as, say, for example, the Warhammer 1 ones were, where certain ones were just really difficult at the very beginning of your campaign, despite the fact that those are items that you should, in theory, be able to unlock at the beginning of your campaign. But yeah, if you want Gotrek and Felix, you're going to have to work for them. And I like the system. I actually quite like it. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, hectic. Hectic. So, great swords. Anything that's heavily armored to basically just hug him whilst you're using, you know, summons and stuff. You can see here that I am actually trying to trigger the um, Alluruses to come down or try and take them out as fast as possible because this is a race against time and it's not like a survival battle. The survival battle itself, uh, you know, those are easy compared to this, I think. This is a much more stressful situation, which is good. I feel like this is going to be better. Plus, again, later campaign, you're going to be fine. In most cases, I would say that people would be coming in mid-game. I haven't seen this despawn and go to anyone else, like how it used to work with their original implementation. I'm not sure if that's actually just going to be the system, or it will switch around. Keep in mind, obviously, again early access build, sometimes there's bugs, believe me, I've dealt with a few bugs, like actually dealing with this, where I had finished the quest battle, Felix spawned, but Gotrek didn't. Now, that apparently has been fixed in the new build, which is deploying at the same time as recording this video, but unfortunately I'm extremely pressed for time because, uh, as you guys are aware, we've had less time to be able to play around with stuff, because Creative Assembly in a full pawn planet mode, and yeah, that kind of affects us too. It's nice to feel challenged in Total War. It's definitely a nice thing, especially as, uh, I don't know, when Warhammer 2 and Warhammer 3 quest battles have generally been way too easy. Maybe there's a little bit of a clutch here and there with Katarin's one if you do it very, very early. But in most cases, it's just very... Simple. For battles like this, having a flying character is definitely going to make your life easier. If you've got something that's got a dot like the Wind of Death and so on, that's going to make it even better for you and much quicker. So yeah, it can actually become super, super easy. But if you're dealt the wrong cards or you just don't have the specific units, it's going to make you want to sweat a bit. I've done this battle with a number of characters, mostly with the Empire, as I was testing the Empire a lot lately. Uh, you do have a lot of interesting stuff, like, for example, Buff as Argelt makes this a cakewalk, mostly because you have just stupid amounts of magic and it just keeps getting better and better. But, yeah, all in all, really good implementation. Shame about the original bug, though, but again, probably fixed by now. But yeah, this has been a fan request for a while, seeing a rework for Gotrek and Felix, which... Even I wasn't expecting in 5.0. It's kind of nice to see more reworks happening, especially, you know, 5.0 being so heavy. By this point, you've seen a number of videos coming out. I hope that this continues to be the same way, where 6.0, 7.0, and so on ends up being as heavy in terms of updates where needed. Obviously, if it's factions that don't really need updates and so on, that's fine. But, yeah, you know... You've shown that you're capable, and I think that's a really important thing. You can see that this is a fairly hectic battle. I've been moving around quite frantically. I've taken some heavy losses with my knights. This is a battle that, if I was doing this on a campaign normally or a live stream, I would probably wait until later down the line, especially with France, once I've solidified myself a little bit. I did this super early for showcase purposes, but not when I'm fighting against other factions, because I think during this campaign specifically, when I was trying to unlock the characters, I was at war with Festus, Grom the Paunch, I think Heinrich was still alive by this point. 
so yeah, getting Franz out of the way, even for just a turn. And yeah, you will get like replenishment bonuses and so on, but like losing troops is not ideal. But if you have some good troops, as you can see here, it's becoming super, super easy. I'm pretty much at the end there. So we're going to start looking towards the characters because once you actually win, the characters will spawn as full-on legendary heroes, having their own unique skill lines too, and pretty much like everything else, right? This is pretty cool. Now you have them there permanently, this means that you have a lot more legendary heroes of the Empire now, uh, especially, you know, Theodore Bruckner is a thing, you've got Ulrika, now you've got these guys. There's a lot of legendary characters that need to be implemented, so it's kind of funny seeing them all coming in like this. I am a big fan of how everything's been done here. The character is very, very cool. You get some nice bonuses there with the dwarves. He's able to do a lot of damage. So you have two characters that you can split up if you so choose, I guess. You can send them to different locations. You can have them pretty much fighting wherever you want. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, legendary heroes are very, very useful and obviously add into a lot of flavor. It gets a little bit better, I think, with Gotrek, I think, uh, because mostly... Gotrek is a bigger name. It's important to remember that Felix is the side character. That doesn't devalue him, though. He's still very, very good at what he does. But yeah, with Gotrek, it's a little bit different because he has a lot of skills. It's a really nice attention to detail where his skills are named after the books, right? Like Dragon Slayer, Zombie Slayer, Skaven Slayer. That's really cool. I know that won't mean a lot to people who have not read through the books and so on, but as a old-school Warhammer Fantasy fan who's been you know, active for many, many years uh, this year, will actually be my 28th year in Warhammer as a hobbyist. Um, God, I feel old. <laughs> it's nice to see these attentions to detail where you'll be boosting up your hero's army uh, with stuff like extra damage against Norska and so on, or extra damage against elves. Yeah, there is a lot of bonuses here. This is a pretty cool system. I'm a really big fan. Well, I might say that Gotrek is one of the best legendary heroes that you can get, pretty much on par with... Say, for example, yeah, the Blue Scribes, you know, being stupid OP with terms of how they're implemented. Now, Gotrek can still very much die. Remember, he's not wearing armor, so he's very, very squishy. But yeah, you've got him there basically buffing up your armies, so your armies are getting even better as it stands anyway. I'm loving the detail that's being implemented with Legendary Heroes. I can't wait to see how it improves over the years, so let's... Well, let's hope there's years left for this game. But, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And let's start a bit of a discussion. There's a lot of videos coming out today, as you can imagine. And there will be a lot more in the next coming days. Pop by to twitch.tv slash the Great Book of Grudges and say hi. And uh, I'll see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.